Hello, Math 30 2. So, this is the second lesson of probability. Today, we're going to talk about odds. Uh, just to start off fresh here, let's do this first question. Um, let's talk about it. fair and unfair games. So, Angelique and Marco here are tossing a four sided dice. Now, I don't know if you guys have, seen, have ever seen a four sided dice before. It's just the triangular dice. Kind of looks like this. This is my triangular dice. And each of these corners, because the triangular dice will have four corners, is a this is going to be a, a triangular dice that kind of looks like that. So it's a, a triangle on all sides, not a pyramid. Each of these corners will have a number written on, like one. And this one here, if you write a two sideways, uh, there'll be two on that one. There may be a three on this one. And then over here, there's a four on that corner. So whatever point is pointing upwards is whatever the number is. So that's what a four-sided dice looks like. Now, I want to know uh, when they roll these dice, they both roll the dice, uh, which of these situations down here will make this game unfair? So let's look at the sample space that we have. Now, the, there's a few different ones here. We want to do the sum. Two of them wants about sums, and one wants the difference. So we have to create two different sample spaces here, one for the sums and one for the differences. Once you create one sample space, you probably just do the mental math and just do the next one over top of the other. I'm just going to draw them both out. Oops, a three. Okay, so they both look very similar on the sides. You got the two four-sided dices. And then I'm going to fill in my sample space here. That will be the sums and the differences. Okay, I'm not going to really worry about negative differences, like is a negative one or a positive one. I'll just make sure it's always positive. Uh, for sums, though, let's see what we have. One plus one is two. 1 plus 2 is 3, 4, and 5, 3, 4, and 5. Remember the patterns we saw? Uh, 2 and 2 is 4, so these are probably going to be 5. This will be 6, this will be 7, and this will be 8. Okay, uh, let's just fill up the different sample set or um, sample space for that one. 0, or 1 minus 1 is 0, 2 minus 2 is 0, 3 minus 3 is 0, 4 minus 4 is 0. All right, so that's 0 is going to cross. 2 minus 1 is 1, 3 minus 2 is 1, 4 minus 3 is 1, so it kind of looks like that. 3 minus 1 is 2, 4 minus 2 is 2, so these will also be the same. 3 minus 1 is 2, 4 minus 2 is 2, and the last ones here are 3s. So that's what the sample space looks like for the difference table. Okay, so let's figure out when does Angelique win in this first situation, and let's see if it's e or a fair game or not. So Angelique wins if the sum is 5. So she'll win if these four spaces there. And Marco wins if the sum is 4. Oh, Marco only wins three of those, but Angelique will win four times out of the 16. So this first game here is unfair. Right? So that's my answer. Not even. Right? Uh, let's just double check to see if these other games are fair. Angelique will win if the difference is one. So if the difference is one. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So she'll win six times there. And Marco will win if the difference is two or three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. They both have six there. So that's a fair game. And let's just double check this last one too. Angelique will win if the sum is odd. Uh, I'm going to pick a different color here. So she'll win if the sum is odd. So she'll win here and all of those spots and these ones. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So she'll win eight times. Mark will win if it's even. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Didn't really quite highlight, but there's also eight. So that's also a fair game. So yeah, looks like our answer is A unfair. We could just cross off none of the above. Okay. So this section, this video is all going to be about how do we represent uh, these probabilities, like this calculation of the total number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number in the sample space. That's the probability. How do we represent that as an odds? Um, what are the odds in favor versus what are the odds against you winning? Uh, so when we do odds, 
usually we write the odds in this fashion here, where we have a very specific side, the side, this is the odds in favor. So we have the favorable outcomes on one side, either written as the number of favorable outcomes on one side, and then the number of not favorable. Remember this complements, that means complements. That means not favorable. If A is the favorable, that, so that's A, B, the favorable outcomes. That just means the outcomes we want, the good outcomes. Okay, they may not be good, depends on what we're talking about. But they are the outcomes we're looking at, the outcomes that we want to happen. So we usually write it this way where we have this little colon in between. So sometimes we say it's like a five to two in favor, right? It's a ratio. So because it's a ratio, we can also just say that this is also five over two. And then we, we always want it to be reduced down. So just plug in your calculator, go math, enter, enter. And those are the numbers you're going to put here if you can. Okay. Always going to be nice numbers too, nice whole numbers, never decimals or anything. So you're going to try to reduce it or do the math and make sure that it always ends up being nice whole numbers. Now, uh, for odds against, it's the exact same idea. It's like instead of looking at what's favorable, we're going to be looking at what's not favorable. So that, in that case, we're going to put that number first. You notice that in the odds in favor, we put that first. Okay, so let me just highlight that properly. That's on top. It's a first thing. But here we're looking for the odds that are unfavorable. We're going to put that first, the unfavorable ones. So when I say odds against, this would be the number of outcomes that are not in favor, and this would be the number of outcomes that are in favor. So let A not B, so this little complement means not, the unfavorable outcomes. Ah. Okay. So to better see this, we'll just do an example here. So a student is asked to choose a card without looking from a standard deck of 52 card decks or 52 cards. Uh, what are the odds of choosing a face card? Okay. So remember our face cards are kings, queens, and jacks. And then we have four suits of these, so four suits. So there are 12 face cards in total. Okay, that's good to know. So what are the odds in favor of choosing a face card? So there are 12 cards that are favorable outcomes. So my number, so let A, this is, let's say that the event of choosing a face card, let's say that's event A. So the number of event A's happening is 12. The number of event A not happening is whatever's left over, so 40. So I'm going to have 12 to 40 odds in favor of getting a face card. Now, that's slightly different than probability. The probability of getting a face card is 12 over 52. You can see that we use the 52 here because it's the total sample space. So there's a difference there between the two. If you add these two numbers together, you get the total sample space. That's how we get that, right? So the odds and probability, they are related to each other. I can get from one to another pretty easily because if I know this is my favorable outcomes on the top, and then I can just subtract it from the bottom to get how many against, how many unfavorable outcomes there are. But my odds for this in favor are 12 to 40. Okay, so that's what this next question is all about. They give us the probability here of twins happening. So probabilities of twins happening, I'm just gonna write this out again, means at the top, is the number of favorable outcomes and the bottom is the number in the sample space because we're talking about probability. So that's how I remember how to calculate our probabilities if we take the number of favorable outcomes or whatever event A happens to be and divide it by the total number. 
So if I want the odds in favor of having twins here, well, one of these 32 pieces, so one of the 32 pieces will be in favor, then what's left over? Well, 31 are against. If I add these together, I should get that 32. So that's A. B is what are the odds against? Well, 31 against to one in favor. So you just really just switch the two. That's all you have to do. Okay. Rebecca's gone to the store to buy jeans for the experience. From experience, she knows the odds against the store having her style of jeans against. So I'm just going to highlight a couple of words here. The odds against are 10 to 32. Determine the probability. So that's a different word here. Determine the probability that the store will have jeans in her size. So she wants to know. This is a favorable outcome. So she wants to know jeans in her size. Let's call that event A. Okay. So I want to know the number of times the jeans will be in stock. And I want to divide it by the total sample space here. So the number of times the genes will be in stock is because this is against to be in stock will be the other number. That's the favorable outcome on this side. So this is the favorable one because this is the against. So this is the unfavorable side over here. So there's 32 chances that will be in stock out of a total of, I'm going to add these two pieces. So it's 32 over 42. For my chances, my probability here, I got the mass somewhere. Did have the mass somewhere. I guess a bunch of my calculator I got right here. 32 divided by 42, math, enter, enter. So 16 over 21. So that you can leave it as a fraction, make sure it's a reduced fraction. But you can also say it's approximately, and you put it in the decimals here. Well, let's say, to the nearest hundredth here, about 0.6 or 0.76. So it's like a 76% chance that the genes will be in stock. Okay. Uh, the odds in favor uh, are given. Determine the probability the event will happen. So this is in favor. So this is this will happen here. Down you can see that these are against. So this is will not happen. So these ones are pretty easy, just that it's pretty much the same as the last question there, since these are the favorable outcomes on this side already, and I want to know when it will happen. I'm just going to go 3 divided by the total sample space. So I'm going to divide it by 8. Or I'm going to have 7 divided by 12. And then in this case, I'm going to have 100 divided by 101. Now, remember, probability can never be more than 100%, more than 1. So if I would just say, oh, what's 100 over 1, that's way too big. All right. So this will be a more or less a probability pretty close. Happen all the time, about 99% of the time. Approximation. Okay. Uh, against, in this case, I want to know what's against, but I want to know when it will happen. So that's these numbers on this side because this is an against information. So this is the against one here. So that's the unfavorable outcomes. So I'm going to put my, because I want to know when it will happen. I want to put my seven on the top and then my total amount, nine on the bottom or top here. And then here I'm going to put one. And that one says one third. Okay. I just want to see how long this video is going to be. It seems so long so far. I'll continue on here. Oh, actually, I'm going to stop the video at this point. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time to look at the next nine-ish questions here or more, the next two pages. Try them out, and I'll be back in the next video to go over those answers. All right, see you in a bit.